Chapter 1. Social Interaction and Its Role in Humanity's Quest for Connection Throughout humanity's history, we have existed as a system that affords us the chance to interact. This desire to interact is an innate trait and is in every human being. Owing to our biology, we need to interact and even bond over similarities or fight over differences. The concept is known as social interaction. Social interaction is an exchange between two or more individuals. It is the building block of society. We can study social interaction between two dyads, groups, three triads, or larger social groups. By interacting with one another, people design rules, institutions, and systems within which they seek to live. There are different avenues or forms of social interaction. Humans are social creatures and seek interaction as a means to bond and grow. Societies throughout history and the world have and still communicate to pass on different pieces of information. The most common forms of social interaction are exchange, competition, conflict, cooperation, and accommodation. Social interactions have shown to improve the well-being of individuals extensively. There are two major benefits of social interaction to the human race, psychological and physical. Positive social interaction can improve your mental health. It can lighten your mood and make you feel happier. Lower your risk of dementia. Social interaction is good for your brain health. Promote a sense of safety, belonging, and security. Allows you to confide in others and let them confide in you. Keep reading to find out how humans navigate social relationships and the roles that ego states play in daily social interactions. Chapter 2 As a basis for social interaction, humans exist in three ego states. While people are very different when it comes to thought and behavior, there is a fundamental behavioral template that everyone inadvertently follows. These templates are known as ego states. An ego state can be described as a coherent system of feelings and operationally as a set of cohesive behavior patterns. Each person is different from others in some way, and it is important to understand that if we want to communicate effectively. There are three ego states. The first is the parent ego state, copied from parental figures in a person's life. The second is the adult ego state, which comes from the objective appraisal of a person's reality and the knowledge garnered from experiences. The third is the child ego state, which is one of the oldest states a person has, as it is one of the spontaneities that comes from childhood. The points these ego states make are simple. Everyone carries their parents inside of them. The behavior of the parental figure lingers in the person. Everyone has an adult the part of a person's mind which processes data and forms understanding. Everyone carries a little child inside of them. This ego is that part that is full of hope and wonder and joy. For some of the ego states, there are a few things that need expatiating. The child ego state is acting childlike, which pertains to just being like a child, full of joy and hope, pure and good. The child ego state can also manifest in two forms, adapted, restricted, and the natural creative and spontaneous child. The adult ego state is that state that guides the individual's decision-making process, whether right or wrong. The parent ego state. This state also manifests in two forms, which are direct and indirect. This state's natural form is the do-as-I-do condition, in which one exactly copies what the parental figure does or says. The indirect form is the do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do, where the person adapts to their requirements and responds as required. The ego states play a huge part in the games people play, as games are often born out of the ego state's whims. We share a common interest in how the past affects people. Some let it decide who they are, while others make it part of what they will do. Eric Byrne Chapter 3. The Games That Come With Social Interactions Slash Operations Usually, the word game means something fun that brings enjoyment or entertainment. However, this definition is not exhaustive. A game in this context is an ongoing series of complementary, ulterior interactions progressing to a well-defined, predictable outcome with a concealed motivation. In other words, it is a deceptive trick used as a shield to cover intentions and preferred outcomes. Not all games are bad. Despite the deception, some are playfully deceiving like flirting, but some are vile through and through. Regular social interaction is called an operation. An operation is a simple interaction or set of interactions undertaken for a specific, stated purpose. If someone frankly seeks reassurance and gets it, that is an operation. 
However, if someone desires comfort and after turns it in some way to the disadvantage of the giver, it is a game. A game is a tool used to conceal one's true intentions and emotions during interaction. Bringing this example to life, if a coworker asks you to take some files to your boss and do that successfully, it is an operation. Your coworker plainly stated the purpose of her interaction with you. If, however, you get scolded by your boss for disrupting a meeting you knew nothing about with files he did not ask for, it is a game. The file was actually to trick you into getting in trouble with your boss. Games are full of deceit and underhanded moves to get the desired outcome, but not all games are wrong. However, despite the deception, a game can resemble a set of operations, but you can see that it was all a maneuver after the purpose comes to light. Not honest requests and actions, but all moves in the game. Society frowns upon candidness, except in privacy. Good sense knows that it can constantly be abused, and the child fears it because of the unmasking which it involves. Dr. Eric Byrne Chapter 4 Games are learned and groomed within us from childhood. Games are not foreign to anyone. They are things we pick up right from our childhood. We play games without even realizing it. A six-year-old overeats at a family dinner and tells his parents he does not feel good. His parents fuss over him and suggest he lie down. Also wanting this attention, his four-year-old brother declares that he also does not feel so good. In such a case, the parents laugh it off, knowing that he is playing a game on them as his brother did. This game is the beginning of a lifetime of fun, where the true purpose remains hidden behind play. In our attempt to interact with others, humanity devised games as the safest method. The child will grow up to pretend to bump into a girl he likes just for an excuse to talk to her. He can also perhaps move on to more games like pretending to care about a customer, only to get them to sign on with his company. Games are mostly our way to navigate the murky waters of social interactions. Everyone plays different games, and they play each game differently according to their backgrounds, parent ego state, and their learned behavior, adult ego state. For example, in the game of flirting, person A might make his move by writing his love interest a note because his father did the same. Person B might begin to emotionally abuse his love interest, giving her attention and then suddenly starving her of love and acting disinterested. This behavior is because of his father letting a girl know that he loves her would make him vulnerable to hurt. Person C might walk right up to his love interest and kiss her full on the mouth, risking a slap because his father says action speaks louder than words. Did you know, social interaction is suitable for your physical and mental health and leads to social connectedness. This generates a positive feedback loop of social, emotional, and physical well-being. Chapter 5 Games exist in every facet of life. An example of a facet of life in which games run rife is marriage. There are many marriage games. One of them is, if it weren't for him. In this game, out of many suitors, a woman picks a domineering man to marry. In this case, she has things she wishes she could do, but is too scared to do. Therefore, she needs someone to blame for not doing those things. She needs someone who would not push her to face her fears and take challenges head-on, but a person to reinforce her restrictions upon herself. It is a case where the player only wants to seem like they want to be free to do something, but they are too scared. A lot of people intentionally create excuses to hold themselves back. It is a game to them. The child in her makes the domineering man's choice to be safe in her bubble of fears and have the man be the parent ordering her. Another facet of life where games come into play is in groups of friendships. A popular game is Ain't It Awful. In this game, the player regales the group with tales of their misfortune whenever they can sympathize. In this game, they are in the child state, enjoying the attention and sympathy of those around them, while the other players who listen to the sad tales are in the parent state, trying to give their help and support. Some games garner pity and have a favorable outcome in mind. Games exist in the criminal aspect of life. An example of this is the game Cops and Robbers. In it, the criminal is in the child state and plays something similar to hide-and-seek. Criminals are addicted to the risk, so much that they fingerprint somewhere intentionally. The game for the criminals is to get caught eventually. Chapter 6. Games can end up shaping a person's journey through life. Now that we have seen how games are in different facets of life, we can now look at games that can take up one's whole life. Kick Me In this game, the player purposely goes out of their way to be horrible to incite their wrath upon him. This game then allows him to pity himself and ask, why does this always happen to me? 
This self-destructive behavior persists, threatening to ruin any chance at a good relationship. They're more interested in feeling sorry for themselves and have no desire to let a tangible connection form. If they happen to meet someone who would tolerate them, they will do their best to drive them away as well, all so that they can have cause to be sad and feel bad for themselves. Games often also offer a skewed perception of how people should interact. Now I've got you, son of a bitch. The player holds in a lot of anger and frustration all the time. As such, they are constantly looking for the opportunity to be angry. Little things that regular people would let go of will rile them up to the max. These people have been holding an injustice done to them which they are unable to rectify, and so they look for every injustice they can find and joyfully exert the total weight of their wrath on it. In such players, they might not even have to be the ones who received the minor injustice. Perhaps a waiter spilled a drink on the player's girlfriend by accident. She says it's okay, but he goes ahead to punch the waiter and ensures he has a black eye. In this game, the player is in the child state, being petty and looking for revenge in whatever way he can find. These games may start off as little steps, but can end up making a huge part of a person's life. What helps is to identify these games and unravel them one after the other. A game can adequately express one's genuine emotions. Chapter 7 Even though we do not start games on purpose, we should make a conscious effort to stop playing games as they limit us. Humans are social animals. We don't do well alone. Anyone alone will be sad and dissatisfied with life. It is our basic biology. Humans need each other to survive and be happy. However, for this bond to exist, we have to open ourselves to others and be vulnerable. Humans usually fear this, so we come up with games to indirectly get what we want, which is a connection. Games are a hamper on real human connection because we have this fear of being vulnerable. The problem with games is that while they form a protective shield that allows us to communicate and interact without being vulnerable, they also limit us. When we play games, we don't show our true selves, and as such, we lose any appreciation for who we indeed are. This decision creates the feeling of being alone, even when many people surround us. It means that despite having people around, our minds don't register the presence of bonding, so we still end up sad. To get rid of the problems of games, we need to be autonomous. For one to indeed be independent means that we are in control of our actions. Autonomy comes in three steps, which are awareness, spontaneity, and intimacy. Awareness is the ability to see and hear things in your way, minus any external input. It will allow you to focus on your strengths and develop strategies to improve your weaknesses. Spontaneity is the freedom to choose and express your feelings in any way you want, from any ego states. Intimacy is the spontaneous, game-free candidness of an aware person, sharing yourself with others without reservations and fear. Through intimacy, we can reduce the need for games and properly connect with people. With these, you can overthrow the burden of games upon you as you will no longer feel the need for them and they will not come to you unbidden. You will be in complete control of your actions as you are now autonomous and no longer a player being jerked around in a game. Conclusion By our existence as humans, we interact with others, either directly or indirectly. Eric Byrne has effectively dissected how we genuinely interact. The Ego States Byrne explains that an ego state is a bedrock for how humans interact effectively. The different ego states are the child, the adult, and the parent. The child ego describes acting childlike, which pertains to just being like a child, full of joy and hope, pure and good. The child's ego state can also manifest in two forms, adapted, restricted, by teaching or adaption, and the natural, creative and spontaneous child. The adult ego state is that state that guides the individual's decision-making process, whether right or wrong. The parent ego state is that which embodies the characters of our parents or guardians, making us act like them or selectively pick up their behaviors. This state is either direct or indirect. Games are a part of our lives which we are so used to that we no longer question. They come naturally, and we don't realize that they are not supposed to be there. These games hold us back from achieving our full potential for connection, and we must escape from the clutches. Try this. It is important to note that people are prone to playing games. Make a conscious effort to keep a calm head in all situations. When your mind begins to jump at an opportunity to get angry, remind yourself that it is a game and don't let yourself fall in.